Hello there. How you all doing? Well, I'm glad to hear that. This particular video and maybe several others that we'll be following as the weeks go on is going to be geared to my YouTube viewers who like the antique radios and electronics and so forth. Unfortunately, I do not have a workshop. I don't know when I'm going to get one set up, so we'll leave it at that. I'm going to touch basic things today. Very basic things. Uh, one of the things I'd like to do is for maybe some of you people that have never changed an outlet, an electrical outlet, um, in your house, and you may, you know, the plugs fall out, it's worn out, they wear out, and you may want to change them, and they're relatively easy to do, and I'm going to go over that with you. So what I'm going to do is let's touch base, very basic stuff on electrical wiring that most anyone can do if they are very careful. So let's go on it right now. This is your standard duplex outlet. This particular one is a 20 amp there it's marked right there. But if you're not sure, and for some reason it may not be marked, you can tell it's a 20 amp outlet because you see this little T on the side, on the, on the ground side here? Or the neutral side? Well, when you see that, that tells you it's a 20 amp outlet. And on the back, you're going to have silver screws, you're going to have brass colored screws. I don't know how well they're going to show up. The cameras are showing it as silver, but there's the silver, there's the brass. Okay, if you look here, you got to remember, just remember a few basic things. The small hole, the brass screws connect to, this and this, is the hot side. That's where your black wire will go. The black wire and house wiring is always a hot wire. This side is the neutral side or the ground, most grounded side, your return circuit. This is connected to the silver screws. That's where your white wire will attach. This of course is your ground prong. That is connected to this green ground screw right here. That is where your ground wire, your bare ground wire, would connect. Now this is a 20 amp rated outlet, as I said. Your standard 15 amp outlet would not have this little T, it would just have the two holes, just like that, where I'm covering it up with my thumb. So your black wire would go here. So what you do is, you, of course you turn your power off, you pull your outlet out and unscrew it, the old outlet, or if it's got one of those quick release things, you stick your screwdriver blade in there and, and release them out, and your black wire will go on. You can put it on either screw. Now, I want to bring something to your attention. There's a little bridge right there. See that? Okay, you're probably wondering, well, I'm putting the black wire here, and I'm putting my white wire over here, but what about these other screws? Well, if you're using it as a single circuit and nothing else is connected to this, that's all you have to do. But if you're daisy chain and some other outlets to it, then you just continue on with the black wire from, to go to the next outlet and the white wire to go to the next outlet so forth, all the way down the line. But that little link also serves, besides linking these two together, if you wanted to have two separate circuits, for whatever reasons, you wanted to have a 120 volt circuit here and a 120 volt circuit here, but you want them on two different breakers or two different circuit lines, then you'd break out this little tab right here with a little pair of needle nose. You just bend it back and forth and it'll break off. That'll separate these two, so you'll have, and you do the same here. Um, but if your neutrals are all usually common, well this is the hot wire, I'm sorry, I got it reversed here, but this is the neutral. So uh, the neutral does not have to be, does not get broken, but if you're running two different circuits, uh, you probably rather should do that because you are coming down from the panel. The, the neutral is the white wire, that runs all the way to your panel, 
and it runs on a neutral bar. Depending on the, uh, the electrical code for the city that you, you, you live in and that you're doing the wiring at, uh, sometimes the neutral bar is grounded to the panel and shares the same ground as the green wire. Other times it's separate and the neutral bar is floating and insulated on the panel. Not a very good drawer, but anyways, your neutral bar in the circuit panel, panel box, you're down in the basement usually, your white neutral is going under one of these screws here. It'll just come down and through and it'll just go into the, set under the screw. These represent the circuit breakers. I'm just drawing just briefly here just to give you an idea. Uh, the main panel coming in, the meter panel from outside, comes in with a... Uh, black wire and a red wire, or it could just be two black wires. Those are the, the hot wires, or the 220 or the 230 volts that's coming in from outside. These are your main hot bus bars. you got two of them. So across this you'll have um, 220 volts, 230 volts, depends on what's coming in off the transformer outside, to your breaker. Your black wire from each circuit would go to the circuit breaker like this. All your blacks go here. These are your little circuit breakers with your switches on them. So when you switch it off, you sh you're shutting it off this uh, hot bus bar here. Your ground wires is your bare, is your bare um, black, uh, copper wire. That'll just connect under the bunch of screws that are going to be on here. Like I said, I'm not a very good drawer. That's why I have to refer to a book as far as drawings are concerned. Because I draw like a kid sometimes. Um, and your white wire, your neutral, which is from these outlets and other circuits, not always outlets, they could be lights, are all in here. Each white neutral goes under its own screw. You should not share the screws with more than one wire. All your grounds go on a, on a bus bar and each one should be in its own screw hole. And if you need more, you just go to the electrical store and you pick up another bus bar and you just add it down here. Your ground, of course, is screwed to the panel and it may have a tab also going down and screwing into the, uh, to give a ground. When you buy the panel, they have this little grounded tab for the neutral bar too, um, which like I say, depending on the code, uh, they may or may not require it. So you'll find that the neutral bar is sitting in an insulated uh, little bracket, which is theoretically insulated from the panel box. But depending on your location and the electrical code requirements for your city, that could vary. So if you have a real old system and you have fuses, it's essentially the same. You got your bus bar here, you got your outside power coming in, and if you have fuses, you probably may not have any more than a 60 amp service coming into the house, which is antiquated and really should be updated. But um, anyhow, you'll have your black wire still coming in from each fuse, usually the 15 to 20 amp fuses, depending. And uh, there'll be two bus bars here. They may not be exactly looking like this. They're usually flat, flat copper, uh, copper conductors that are connected to here to go to the, and the fuse would screw into a what looks like a light bulb socket. Um, you can generally tell with a, a fuse if your circuit is being overloaded. Take your back of your finger and gently touch the glass of the fuse. Don't touch anything else. Touch the glass of the fuse and if it's running warm, your circuit is being overloaded. It should not be warm. If that fuse is warm, and I'm talking about the glass, I don't mean to go putting your fingers down into here, but touch the, um, touch the glass very gently. And if it's overloaded, I think you better go get your electrical system updated. Oh, I hope that helps a little bit on basic house wiring. I know it isn't very detailed, but hopefully it'll give you an idea of whether you want to tackle the job yourself or have a pro do it. Thank you for watching.